today they are right on the pace as a result of that testing by that team as you said yesterday they flew under the radar and did a thousand miles of testing Shannon Amat is a refreshing guy I mean here we are barely over a third of the way through the season and most of the all race drivers will say, oh, we're just taking the races one at a time. We're not thinking championship. DeMott is very upfront about it. It's championship or nothing this year. Second place is first loser. We're going for it all. There is Dario Franchitti, currently running third. Jan Bikas has more on him. Yes, I had a quick word with George Klotz. He is a crew chief on the car for Dario Franchitti. He changes the outside front tire. That's why he has the orange sleeves on his suit to try and flag Dario down. He said simply, what happened on the right front was just the wheel nut got away from me. It was just simply a case of me spitting the wheel nut off. It came out of the gun, and he knows that those precious seconds are going to cost him. Now he has a chance at the next stop to try and make it up. I'm just glad George got that wheel on because when Kenny Brack's team had trouble in Portland, as you saw, the wheel nut came off and the wheel came off right behind it. And of course, it happened to Dario's teammate, Paul Tracy, at Laguna Seca. So I'm just glad he finally got the wheel nut on. Often those wheelmen will have a spare nut on their belt. So in case one drops off, they could just slap another one on. This one may have fallen right in his lap. Often those teams have a spare nut to drive the car. <laughs> Take a break and return with more live from the CART Grand Prix of Chicago. Stay with us. Welcome back to Chicago Motor Speedway. Here's something you should know about this track in our Toyota Spotlight. Not only do cars race here at Chicago Motor Speedway, horses do. That's War Emblem winning the Illinois Derby en route to a big victory in the Kentucky Derby. Racing on a track laid on the pit lane and the backstretch pit access here at Chicago Motor Speedway. Four feet of dirt, 2,500 truckloads worth. So they bring in heavy equipment, move 500,000 cubic yards of dirt off of the warm-up and pit lane areas. It costs about a half million dollars to convert this track from horses to automobiles. From horses to horsepower, if you look at the pit lane here, you see this brown line that runs right down along there? That is the dirt line between there and there is four feet deep. That is as much dirt as you need to run the old ponies. My question is, where do they store the dirt? I don't see it anywhere. Put it back where you found it. <laughs> yeah. Well, this the is where you find it. The only racetrack in the country used for those dual purposes. At Dover, Delaware, there is a horse track within the auto racing track. But nowhere else will you find it right on the racetrack itself. Alex Tagliani continues to lead the way over Cristiano D'Amata, Dario Franchitti, Bruno Giancara, and Tony Canon as we are rapidly approaching the halfway mark in this 250-lap race. What a great time it would be for Tag to get his first win right before we go to Toronto because the Canadians follow Champ Car Racing so much across the border, this would be perfectly timed for him. Could this be Alex Tagliani's day, the day of his first victory in the CART FedEx Championship Series? Jan Bikas has more on him. I do with Neil Mickelright. Obviously, your day is going great. Do you anticipate, I mean, are you right where you want to be with the car? Uh, you know, right now, the car's going real well. Tag says he's happy with it. Um, it seems pretty consistent. I mean, we're not even halfway yet, so there's an awful long way to go. But uh, right now, things are going okay. Is the key for you now, your pit strategy, is that really what's going to make or break the difference to your two remaining pit stops? Um, you know, obviously it always plays a factor, but uh, we're hopeful that we'll be able to get enough of a lead on some of the people behind us that uh, we can afford not to do the very best of things and still do well. Would you consider saving some fuel right now so you can make a faster pit stop? Uh, that's not really a consideration this early in the deal. Thank you, Neil. Thanks. Actually, that brings up an interesting point, Jan, because the cars are doing about 2.2 miles to the gallon here, which means to go the mandatory 68 laps, you only need just over 31 gallons in the fuel tank. So actually, you never need to fill it up during any of these stops. And of course, that fuel is methanol, not gasoline. Let's get more on Cristiano D'Amata's situation now. Ralph Shaheen. Well, we're with Peter Gibbons. He's senior engineer for Cristiano D'Amata. Peter, how is your car performing at this point? Really well. Really happy with it. We're going to make a small change. Tire pressure's next stop, but going well. And that will do what to the car? Uh, give us a little bit better traction. How 
are you going to do your pit stops now for the rest of the race? Uh, we're on sequence, so there's two more stops. Looking good. Is there any chance you might alter your pit strategy to come up with a different plan here at the end of the race? No. <laughs> All right, they're set. Looks like in stone as well. That is the man, Peter Gibbons, who lives for making these cars go fast for Newman Haas. He was the guy I mentioned the last race, I headed off to England. During everybody else's vacation, he goes to the wind tunnel. Look at Tag now, beginning to just stretch it over Peter Gibbons' car of Cristiano D'Amata. There is Tag coming off turn four, and D'Amata beginning to struggle to stay right close to Alex Tagliani. Our next race is on the streets of Toronto, Canada at Exhibition Place. What a triumph it would be for team players to Good. arrive in Canada with two Canadian drivers with a victory in their pocket. There is Tony Kanan, currently shown in fifth, on board with him. One of the great personalities. Also, one gear change, two gear changes. DeMata only changes one time. There's two, two gears down. But I mentioned earlier, they have never been away to test this car. They arrive at a racetrack and do the best they can, and they do a great job. Fastest yesterday morning after the first practice session. And you know what? Don't you think Tony Ganan deserves a bit of good luck? Oh, no question. How many races has he, has he led, including the Indy 500? And he hasn't won one this year yet. Been lucky to finish thus far this year. Began with a string of DNFs. On the pole here last year, so he knows this track well. He likes this track. Finished eighth after leading 51 laps. His best finish of 2002 thus far, two weeks ago, on the road course at Portland, Oregon, eighth place. Yeah, and that is not a fair testament to what Mo Nunn's team, this pioneer back team, it's not a testament to what they have done. They're looking to get a day because they worked so hard. Move back to Adrian Fernandez on the pole at Milwaukee. So this is the only owner driver in the field here. And they have historically, Bob, had a good oval track setup. 12 laps before we pit. 12 laps. That is Don Halliday, his partner, a co-owner of this team as he's chased down by Paul Tracy here. Paul Tracy, there is excitement everywhere he is around the racetrack. You can see that worst position was 13th, which I believe was his starting position on the grid. Yes, it was. ABS Auto Racing Series coverage of the Kart Grand Prix of Chicago will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Auto Racing Series is sponsored by Eagle One Wax As You Dry. There's a new way to wax. Wash cars, spray on, dry off, you're done. FedEx, proud sponsor of the FedEx Championship Series. And by Toyota. Get the feeling. To Chicago Motor Speedway, I'm Bob Barsha, along with Derek Daly, Jan Bikas, and Ralph Shaheen are down in the pit lane. A blistering hot day here in Chicago. We had one short yellow flag at the beginning of this race, Derek. Other than that, it's been all green and a huge strain on these drivers. Exactly. And what we see now is just how tough it is to win one of these races in these conditions because no, no longer can you rely on your own talent or your own car setup. You have to rely on what happens in the pit lane. And we saw DeMato, Juncker, and Tagliani all gained the last time. Frank Kitty and Canaan lost. Jan Bikas. And the leader, as you say, is on pit road. Look for a front wing change. Like Neil Mickelwright said, they okay, don't want any dramas. Reset your fuel you're going to have to do without a drink, okay? There's the wing change. Go, 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 oh, wow, go, 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 that's a fast one. And you're going to have to do without a drink, my boy. Okay, you better hunker down here now. It is not how good his pit stop was. The interesting thing for me is when DeMata peels off and Junquera and uh, uh, Dario Franchitti, where do they all come out? What is the sequence? You can't lose time on your in lap, so they don't hear. There, Dario falls him right in. This is Kanan. Jan? Yes, we're watching Tony Kanan from behind, also taking advantage of the early part of this pit window. Now, he took front wing out, waiting for the old Oh, 8.9, and there goes Damata on the way out, as well as Junkera. 
Ashley DeMott is on the way in, as is Bruno Jancara, Frankini, Fernandez, and Nakano also in the pits. Ralph. Cristiano DeMott is in. They were going to put just a little bit of tire pressure adjustment to this car because he needed a little bit more traction. DeMott with a great stop at just under 10 seconds. And where is Tagliani? Can he get around turns one and two and beat DeMott out? That's the drag race. Tagliani's coming off two. He is coming off two. Closing up on Junkera. Oh. And goes by him on the outside. No, he doesn't. Tag's in trouble. Oh, he got up the hill into the gray. And DeMata takes the lead okay, from Junkera from Tag. Okay, get him covered up. Let's charge back. Man, oh, that was a risky, risky move that almost cost him dearly. But now he lost the vital track position. We now give that to Cristiano DeMata. Well, he had to try it, and it looked like he was going to pull it off. He just couldn't get the car to stick. There's Christian get back into, your groove, okay? into the lead into for the, the moment. We're still just over halfway, so we've got the rest of the race to catch your feet. Neil Mickenwright trying to calm him down. And you know what? He had a good pit stop, but not just good enough. Oh, now here's Fittipaldi being held up slightly by Mario Dominguez. who was a lap down in 14th place. Adrian Fernandez is back into the pit lane. He had a quick stop, but now he is coming back in from 9th place. Fernandez, the only owner driver in the series. A huge national hero in his native Mexico. He will be the crowd darling when we go to Mexico City in the fall. The report is no brakes. And the report on Mexico City is the potential for more than 300,000 people, such as the following for Champ Car Racing and for their heroes. Here comes Fittipaldi. Ralph Shaheen awaits him. Christian Fittipaldi making his way down pit road. They had been running on the racetrack behind Mario Dominguez and didn't like their track position. Thought they were running a little bit quicker than him, couldn't get around him, so they pitted earlier than they had originally planned. Should be a basic stop on trouble with the right. It's a big problem. They don't think that they got around completely. You can expect to see him come back in here. If he can get around. Two straight races. Oh, there it goes. The third time this season, the third straight race in which a wheel has come off a different race car. It happened on the Monterey Peninsula at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. It happened two weeks ago at Portland. First it was Paul Tracy, then it was Kenny Brack, now Christian Fittipaldi. And you know what? The boys, as he left the pit lane, they knew that wheel was going to come off. You could see the disgust as he was about 10 yards in full flight with wheel spin that he wasn't going to go too far. The yellow flag is out for the second time today. It happened so quickly. What happens is when you, when you, when you jack the car up, the wheel goes on to like four or five studs and there are holes in the inside of the wheel and you can line it up and suddenly you get it seated into those studs and but you can actually get the wheel tight and not be seated of course as soon as the wheel spins the wheel goes right into the studs it goes in the wheel nuts now loose it spins off home race for the Newman Haas team and a day that began with such joy for Brazilian national Christian Fittipaldi.